A very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we thank our Lord for giving yet another opportunity to discuss His wonderful words of life. So today, we are going to see one important topic uh, about uh, which, uh, you see, happened in the uh, uh, life uh, of the people of Israel. We all know very well uh, that uh, the people of Israel were in bondage uh, in uh, Egypt. And uh, after many years of bondage and severe uh, work and labor, they were so much fed up uh, that they used to frequently cry to God for deliverance. You see, dear brethren, and that is the time that, uh, you see, God, uh, you see, heard uh, the cry and raised uh, a deliverer, and that is Moses. And Moses, you see, went uh, to see Pharaoh and told uh, Pharaoh to leave the people of Israel, let them go, that they may worship God. But Pharaoh would uh, never listen to the words of Moses. Uh, and he said, uh, who is your God and why should I listen to your God? Because he himself was like a God uh, in Egypt, you see. And he would never listen, uh, you see. And we all know very well that uh, when, uh, you see, Pharaoh uh, did not uh, give heed to the words of Moses, then God brought ten plagues upon Egypt. You see, the plagues were so severe that... Um, uh, the first uh, three plagues actually affected uh, both of uh, the Egyptians as well as the Israelites. But the rest of the seven plagues, it affected only the Egyptian people. And the last uh, tenth plague was only upon the first one. So, what all plagues uh, came upon uh, the Egyptians? Uh, if you see, the first plague was that uh, water was turned to blood. There was no water. Not even for drinking, not even for usage, anything. And this came upon the whole <clears throat> land of Egypt, both upon the Egyptians as well as the, you see, the Israelites. And the second plague, you see, that came was uh, the plague of the frogs. All over the land of, uh, you see, Israel, there were frogs uh, all over, uh, you see, different. So, uh, what happened uh, was that uh, the Egyptians uh, uh, could not kill the frogs. Why? Because they believed that uh, Nile was their god and uh, especially the frog that lived in the Nile river was actually their gods. So once uh, the Nile river got uh, completely bled, uh, you see all the frogs uh, came out of uh, Nile and uh, infected uh, the entire land of Egypt. So it was very difficult for them uh, to, to control this plague. You see, and uh, uh, the third plague that came was lice. And the entire, uh, you see, Egyptians, uh, you see, uh, the lice uh, came upon the entire uh, uh, body. And the fourth uh, plague was the flies uh, and beetles. Uh, you see, uh, this uh, filled uh, the entire uh, the land of Egypt and uh, the fifth uh, one was a disease of the livestock uh, because of these, uh, you see, the flies and the beetles uh, which sat upon all the, you see, animals uh, and the cattle and all, it actually infected uh, each and every, uh, you see, uh, cattle and all. And thus what happened was that uh, as a result, uh, there was a, a great disease among all the livestock uh, of uh, the Egyptians. This affected only the Egyptians, not the Israelites. Uh, so, uh, the sixth one was the boils. You see, the boils upon all the animals, the boils upon the uh, human body. The boils were so severe that they began to scratch the body. And this was the sixth plague. And the seventh plague was uh, the falling of the hailstone from the sky. You see, we all know very well when there is a heavy rain, you see the hailstones actually fall from the sky. So here we see that the hailstone was so huge that uh, it was like uh, as if a uh, hailstone mingled with fire. And this fell upon the Egyptians. Uh, and uh, the eighth one was locusts. 
You see, the grasshoppers that covered the entire land of Egypt and all the crops were entirely, totally destroyed. And the ninth plague was the darkness. Pitch darkness in such a way that all the Egyptians, wherever they sat, they sat there for three days. They could not move at all. It was such a pitch darkness that uh, not even their hands could be seen. Not even the person who sat next to each other could be seen. But the next road, you see, there was light uh, in the land uh, where the people of Egypt, uh, Israelites dwelt. So, this was the ninth plague. The last plague was the, la, the plague of the firstborn. That was the time that the Passover was celebrated. Okay. Now, dear brethren, See, why did God permit these 10 plagues? God could have destroyed uh, in a single plague. But here, if you see, after each and every plague, Pharaoh called for Moses. You see, and he promised that uh, he would uh, deliver, uh, you see, uh, the Israelites and let them go if uh, he prayed to God and God would remove this uh, plague. But unfortunately, after each and every request considered by Moses, Moses prayed to God. God removed this plague. But as God removed the plague, Pharaoh hardened his heart. We read, the, we read this one in Exodus initial chapters very clearly that each and every plague that was removed, it hardened the heart of Pharaoh. You see, and again, he would uh, be stubborn. He would never let uh, his people go. So, here, uh, dear brethren, you see that uh, uh, this continued. Uh, hence, uh, there was a uh, 10 plagues. And the last 10 plague was so severe that uh, Pharaoh's firstborn was killed. And as soon as Pharaoh lost his own son, Pharaoh immediately... You see, commanded uh, all the Israelites to be thrown out, uh, out of Egypt. So, hence, with a mighty hand, all the Israel uh, came out of Egypt. Now, okay. Now, what is the meaning of this one? What does it represent? What does it mean to us? Dear brethren, you see, uh, uh, we all know uh, very well that the whole world is under bondage. Under the God of this world, as Pharaoh controlled the entire uh, Egyptians as well as the Israelites, similarly the whole world is under the control of the God of this world, the devil himself. And the devil doesn't allow God's children to worship uh, the one true God. Always his target is his God's children. Always try to keep them in his own bondage. He would never allow them to go out of uh, his clutches and worship one true God, dear brethren. You see, and uh, you see, uh, that is the time that uh, he would give false promises, uh, you see, and false uh, hopes, uh, and try to keep his children, uh, you see, than to go to worship his God. But God, you see, as he raised Moses, even God has raised Jesus through whom. Uh, there is deliverance. Jesus pleads for us, you see, and try to intercede for us and to set us free. So, uh, Pharaoh represents Satan. Moses represents Jesus. And the people of Israel represents God's children. While Egypt itself represents the whole world. Okay. Now, what else does Egypt represent? Let us read one verse in Revelation 11.8. Revelation 11.8. Amon uh, brother, can you read Revelation 11.8? Okay, Revelation 11.8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is all Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was uh, crucified. See, here it says, you see, uh, in the their bodies were lying in uh, 
land of Sodom and Egypt. You see? So, it is says that spiritually, you see, in the land of Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was, so was crucified. Correct, no? Now, you tell me, where was our Lord Jesus crucified? Was he crucified in Egypt or was he crucified in Sodom? Tell me, where was our Lord Jesus crucified? Very tough one, Sarah. Very tough question. Tell me, where was Jesus crucified? Nobody knows the answer. Where was Jesus crucified? Where did Jesus die? Where did Jesus Golgotha. die? Golgotha. Very good. Where is it? Is it in Sodom or is it in Egypt? Israel. Israel. But in Revelation it says uh, Sodom and Egypt not. You see? Huh? This is not uh, literally Sodom and Egypt. Because the verse itself clearly says Spiritually, it is called as Sodom and Egypt. Spiritually. That means, this is a symbolic Sodom and symbolic Egypt. Now, you tell me, huh? how can our Lord be crucified? You see, what all ways can Jesus be crucified? One way is that he can literally be crucified on the cross where he actually gave his life for us. That happened many years before in the land of Israel and Golgotha. Apart from this, can we crucify Jesus again and again? You see? Can we crucify? Yes. We can crucify Jesus again and again. How? You see? By conducting the mass. You see? By conducting the Lord's memorial every now and then, monthly, weekly, daily, you see, our Lord Jesus is being crucified again and again. Okay. Now, where is our Lord Jesus crucified? You see, our Lord Jesus is crucified in Sodom and Egypt. It's not little Sodom and little Egypt. This is symbolic. Now, you tell me, where or who conducts the memorial? Weekly, monthly, daily. Tell me. Where do we see that the memorial is conducted? Weekly, monthly, daily. <clears throat> the Lord's Supper is there, no? Where is it conducted daily? Where is it conducted weekly? Or where is it conducted monthly? Tell me. Um, sorry, brother, what was your question? The question was that, you see, we know that the Lord's memory has to be conducted only yearly ones, correct? Yes. But uh, where do they conduct it monthly, weekly or daily? Catholic. Yes. Then, only Catholics, huh? Um, and... Protestants. Protestants as yes. well. Yes, Protestants. See, these two denominations, the Protestants as well as the Catholic, they conduct this memorial, you see, whenever they want, monthly, weekly, daily. This is the symbolic Egypt. This is the symbolic Sodom, where our Lord Jesus is crucified again and again. So, the Babylon, the great Babylon, the great false churches, that is Egypt as per the Bible. So, who was the, the prince of Egypt? There, Pharaoh was there. You see, now who was stuck in Egypt? God's children, Israel was stuck in Egypt. Now, whom did God send to deliver the God's children? God sent Moses. Similarly, today, you see, God's children are stuck in all the false churches. You see, in the Babylon. Now, God 
by giving them this truth, cast them out of Babylon. But uh, you see, will Satan leave the God's children to go and worship the one true God? No, he would not go. He would not allow them to go. Hence, uh, what will happen? God's plague come upon them. You see, God's wrath is coming upon them. But even then, Satan won't allow God's children. Read Revelation 18. Revelation 18, 4. Romeshter, can you read Revelation 18, 4? <clears throat> And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Ah, you see, come out of her, my people. Come out. You see, God tells God's children to come out. But what does Satan say? Come in. Come in, my children. Don't go out. Come in. Isn't it? So, that is the work of the devil. Now, there God sent ten plagues. One after the other. One after the other. You see, Pharaoh told lies that I will release, I will release, I will release. You will never release. But you know what happened? Actually, when the plague was going severe, 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 Pharaoh was sometimes fed up. You see? And hence, sir, Sometimes in between, he called Moses to compromise. You see, Moses strictly told that uh, he should allow the entire people of the nation of Israel to go out of Egypt and worship God. Initially, Pharaoh told, no, I won't allow. Then, uh, as the plagues uh, came one upon the other, he cooled down. He tried to call Moses for compromise in saying, no, first only you go. First only men go, then go and come back, you see. So, such time of compromises, he tried to bargain with uh, Moses, you see. So, such type, four compromises were given by Pharaoh, you see. For how many compromises? Four compromises for Moses, you see. So, that, uh, he may try to adjust and stay there only. But today, we are going to see what are those four compromises and learn and see what lessons do we have with uh, you see with these four compromises for us okay the first compromise you see pharaoh gave was uh, given to us in exodus 8 chapter was uh, 25 and 26 okay joel brother can you read exodus uh, 8 chapter 25 and 26 And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet to so do, to do, for we shall sacrifice the ab abomination of the Egyptian to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptian before their eyes, and will they not stone us? Ah, see, the first compromise Pharaoh gives is that, you see, go. You wanted to sacrifice your God to your God. No? You wanted to worship your God. No, go, don't worry. But do that one in the land of Egypt itself. Here only, here only you worship your God. You see, eh? so that is what Satan tells. You learn the truth. You heard the classes. You heard the basic classes. You see, good, okay, no problem. But you want to worship God? Why don't you worship God here only? Here in here, here in the Christian dome only, here in the false church only. You want to sacrifice to God? No problem. You can do whatever sacrifice you want while staying in the false church only. You don't believe the false teachings among the churches? Don't worry, don't believe. You see, but... Stay here. 
some people you see they get compromised for this uh, wonderful offer now correct now let me stay in the false church only no problem what is there use i can stay here but i worship the one true god you see some you see are uh, so strict uh, that as soon as they listen the one truth even one basic class is sufficient they leave out the churches sir they leave out all the first uh, false churches sir you see and some people they are even uh, other way they will tell no i will stay in babylon i will go and teach babylon i will go and correct babylon you see can we correct babylon or as can we preach to the false christians who don't believe the truth you see what did moses say verse 26 he said no it is not meet for us to do so for if we shall sacrifice the abomination of the egyptians to lord our god you see what will the egyptians do they will stone us they won't keep quiet similarly if you start being in babylon and tell all the teachings to the babylon will they listen no they would never listen at all dear brethren they would never listen you see huh what will happen then dear brethren you see huh what will happen no when nobody listens even after we telling we will start get pulled off we will think uh, there is a uh, nothing much difference between that one and this one so we will become cool uh, dear brethren what does the bible say what did jesus say read revelation 3rd chapter how should we be in the truth revelation 3rd chapter uh munna sister please read revelation 315 and 16 ah uh, munna sister you there revelation 3rd chapter 15 and 16 okay joel brother can you read <clears throat> i know why thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot i will thou wait cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out my mouth ah uh, you see huh? what did uh, he say huh Huh? so huh? jesus said no huh? either you be cold either you be hot just because you neither hot nor cold i will spew out of your mouth we can't be it this way that way we need to take decisions whether we need to love the lord when we need to worship the lord when we need to sacrifice the lord or not we can't be both ways we can't be in babylon as well as in the truth what did jesus say jesus said no man can serve two masters if he is going to serve two masters he is going to please one and displease the other we can't serve our lord and we can't serve satan also we need to take decision and come out of babylon we can't correct babylon some people think that we will stay in babylon a lot of friends are there a lot of relatives are there our brother is there sister is there we will correct babylon no we can never correct babylon why because god himself has tried to correct babylon several times after all his efforts only is telling revelation 18 for we just now read come out of her my people for our sins are reached at heaven lest you be partakers of her plague god himself has tried through the seventh angel our brother charles stays russell through him only is tried to correct babylon but uh, babylon would never correct uh, you see read Rev- uh, jeremiah 519 jeremiah 519 uh, romi sister can you read jeremiah 519 uh, jeremiah 519 sister we would have healed babylon but she is not healed 
forsake her and let us go every let us go everyone into his own country uh, for her mm. riches unto heaven and it lifted up even to the skies see what does god say huh? flee babylon come out of babylon leave her because uh, sins are reached to heaven god himself is saying uh, come out when god himself is telling to come out we should listen that means god knows exactly that babylon can never be corrected uh, you see through our brother russell only we see babylon was tried to be corrected but did it get corrected no you see dear brethren hence uh, satan lived him also as a false uh, cult uh. dear brethren satan tries to do all the you see evil activity is to spoil somebody's name uh. dear brethren you see telling that uh, brother russell is the founder of jehovah witness well he is never the founder of jehovah witness because jehovah witness was formed only after uh, death of uh, brother russell uh. you see in your place is also i think the lot of jehovah witness is there that we saw on the road you see if we were jehovah witness why would we come they would only come to your place no already is there in your place dear brethren so we should understand what type of compromise you see uh, satan gives us you know when uh, pharaoh offered them to worship uh, year only do you think uh, pharaoh would have told go worship wherever you want no he would have told i will give you a beautiful land i will only build your temple and give i will only build your altar and give what all you want and tell me i'll give you but you stay here only similarly when we are listening to the classes only you know how satan will deviate us you see he will deviate us through friends uh, through pastors to relatives sir uh, you see you devil tell oh you leaving your close friends uh, you leaving your close relatives you see such loving friends who are so close to you for so many years pastors you see ha eh? but dear brethren you see eh? we should take decision whether we need to please the master or we need to please men you see nobody can uh, you see give us salvation nobody can help us to get the heavenly salvation we need to work it out ourselves we need to work it out and how do we get it only by pleasing the lord you see read galatians 110 joel brother read galatians 110 <laughs> for do i now proceed procedure men or god or do i seek to please men for if i yet please men i should not be servant of christ mm. you see whom should i please please men or god if i'm still trying to please men that i am never a servant of god if you are not the servant of god then forget about being a disciple of jesus dear brethren therefore jesus said until you deny yourself carry the cross and follow me you can be my disciple you see you know we can't uh, drink of the lord's cup uh, as well as the cup of the devil you see there are two cups dear brethren you see we need to take decision into whom we will drink uh, you see very shortly there is going to be uh, the lord supper you see this year's lord supper falls on april 21st you see it comes only yearly once we need to take decision whether we going to you see partake in the lord's cup partake in the lord's table or partake in the devil's table satan would give us lot of offer at this time only so that we may never follow the lord isn't it but we need to take decisions dear brethren see corinthians brother ha huh? first corinthians 10:21 uh first corinthians 10:21 amar brother can you read first corinthians 10:21 first corinthians 10:21 he cannot drink the cup of the lord and the cup of uh, devils 
he cannot be a partaker of the Lord's table and of the table of tables. See, we can't take both the table. We need to decide. You see, so as Moses decided, similarly we also need to decide. Moses never compromised for anything. Given. So what happened again? Again, the uh, severe plagues went on. You see, again, uh, Pharaoh was fed up and again, uh, Pharaoh called Moses for uh, compromise. You know, this time what was the compromise he gave? Let us read Exodus 8 chapter verse 28. Amra uh, brother, can you read Exodus 8, 28 brother? Exodus 8.28 And the Pharaoh said, I will let you go that he may sacrifice to the Lord your God your God in the uh, wilderness only he shall not go very far away uh, mm -hmm. in truth for me. Uh -huh. See, what did he say? Huh? Pharaoh said, I will let you go. No problem. You want to go, go, go. But, uh, huh? where do you go? Don't go too far. Huh? That means, uh, pray for me. That means what? Uh, huh? Have a touch with us. Don't go too far. We, we all know very well uh, the character of people of Israel. Even after leaving Egypt, going so far, almost near the border of Canaan land, there only they decided, you see, to stone Moses kill Moses huh? and uh, name a new leader and come back to, you see, come back to where? Uh, come back to Egypt. Uh, you see, if, then, if uh, Moses would have listened uh, and uh, been very near to Egypt, what would have people done? People would have run back uh, to Egypt. Uh, see the very cunning, uh, you see, subtle deception of the devil. If, then, similarly, Satan also tells us, Huh? Oh, don't go too far. You see, don't go too far to sacrifice to the Lord. You see, don't offer your body as a living sacrifice. What foolish thing you're doing? You, know? you can just worship the Lord wherever you want. Just two and three are gathered in my name. Hmm? That is sufficient. No need to sacrifice to the Lord. Sacrifice all is finished. You see, dear brethren, you see, huh? some people, they do like this only. Huh? Huh? They tell, huh? for basic class, we'll come and listen here. But uh, for worship, uh, huh? for Saturday worship, where we'll go? We will go there only. Huh? Why? Keep in touch, uh, keep in contact. Uh. You see, dear brethren, huh? huh? Pharaoh said, uh, huh? be here only. Uh, be in very close. Uh, you know, huh? how. Pharaoh took care of uh, people of Israel. He gave them good food. Healthy food. Read Numbers. Numbers 11 chapter. Joel brother, read Numbers 11 chapter. Verse 5 brother. Eleven, five chapter, brother. Ah, eleventh chapter, verse five. Okay. We we remember the feast which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. See what good food he has given. No? Melons, ah uh -huh. fish, uh -huh. bread, uh, cucumber, onion, whatever. So, we all remember these things. So, we'll go back, we'll go back. You see, similarly, Satan will tell, what is there here? Small chairs, nothing is there, only a few people. There, big people are there. Big church is there. Big choir group is there. Lot of inflation people are there. Anything happens, they will come running. You see, educated people are there. You see, it's a big organization. Dear brethren, think... What good or influential people were there with Jesus? With Jesus, they were only fishermen. You see, not well educated, except, uh, you see, you can say Matthew, the tax collector. 
Nobody went to school. All were illiterate. What does the Bible say? The Bible says the God has called the poor of this world for rich in faith. You see, that is God's calling. Read James 2.5. James 2.5, brother. Uh, Romister, can you read uh, James 2.5? Hmm. Uh, Romister, you're there? Okay. Yes. James, uh, verse, which one? James 2.5. Second chapter, verse 5. Yes. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? See, them that love him. God has called the poor of this world, rich in faith, dear brethren. You see, Jesus himself never went to school. He was never an influential guy, but God, God took care of him. What did Moses reply for this compromise of Pharaoh? Let us read Exodus 8.27. Joel, brother, read Exodus 8.27, brother. Will, we will go there. Uh, we will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. See, what did Moses say? I, we will travel three days and sacrifice the way as God has commanded us. This should be our reaction. You see, some uh, people, you know, Satan will tell, oh, there are so many churches nearby, you know, we are going so far, we are taking so risk. You see, huh? dear brethren, uh, yes, there may be so many churches, but there is no truth in them. There is no God uh, in those churches, dear brethren. God's children need to travel. Travel very far. You see, even heaven is also far. Why don't you plan just to quit it, no? But that we take risk, no? You see, even uh, heaven, uh, from heaven, earth was very far. Jesus came from very far, you see, to risk uh, for our sake, dear brethren. So, we also need to travel very far. Three days journey in those days means 45 miles. Imagine, 45 miles. Is it so easy just to come to worship God? Dear brethren, we need to take the risk for the Lord. What does the Bible say? Where the dead bodies are there, there the vultures will gather. So, dead body is important for the vulture. That is the food. This is the place where we get spiritual food. For this one, we should be ready to take any risk, you see, whatever it may be, even cover a lot of distance to sacrifice for the Lord. So this was the second uh, compromise. You see, dear brethren, and after uh, again, uh, uh, plagues went on, you see, so there again, uh, what happened, if you see, uh, Pharaoh called the third time and gave yet one more compromise. So what was the compromise uh, that was given? Let us read Exodus 10 chapter verse 8. Exodus 10 verse 8. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read Exodus 10 8? And Moses and Aaron were brought again into Pharaoh and, the Ise, and he said unto them, Go serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? Okay. First, uh, he said, don't go. Second, he said, don't go too far. But third, now he himself is compromising and telling, okay, you want to go, go. But who are all you going? Huh? How many people are going? Whom do you want to take along with you? Huh? You see, you know, what does it sell? Huh? Pharaoh tells, take only the men and go. Read, brother. Verse 11, brother. Not so go now ye that are men and serve the Lord for that ye de desired and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. See, 
what did uh, what is say sorry fero say fero said huh? you want to go go but take only men and go no women no children you know what does it mean now it means you leave your family here only and you all go and you all go and worship the lord imagine just leave the family here if entire egypt israel people leave egypt then what will happen now if their family is here uh, do they think that uh, they will not return back they will return back uh, uh, dear brother see it i come to your place uh, when i come to your place i book return ticket correct no now why do you book return ticket uh, because my family is here isn't it wife is here children is here so i buy a return ticket uh, you see that means uh, pharaoh if he is telling to leave his family here and go indirectly he is telling book your return ticket and go he knows very well if the family is here they will definitely return back see this is what the satan does you see no what does satan say you learn the classes good you go you go you go no problem but don't take your family don't take your husband don't take your wife don't take your children leave them leave them here and let them come here you see dear brethren do you think uh, it will work out no you see uh, if the husband is listening to the truth and the wife is not listening to the truth you know what will happen dear brethren you see that don't work out uh, that won't bring peace in the family disturbance will come what did jesus say jesus said i never came to bring peace on this earth i came to bring a sword uh, difference between the mother in law and the daughter in law brother and the sister husband and the wife uh, son and the father that difference will come because one will stand for the truth and other not stand for the truth we said brethren we have taken classes so many places everywhere we advised come as a family that is very very important because initially they don't understand the concept of this truth but uh, you see as we go on we realize that the, this truth is not like other bible study in the world this is the real truth this is the one and only truth so it will definitely urge us and bring us to consecration and devote our life to the lord then what will happen you see one person in the family will come other person will be just left like that only so what will happen that will create disturbance you know how satan will attack how did satan attack adam satan knew very well that he could not touch adam because he was very strong therefore he attacked adam through eve he was a weaker vessel similarly satan also will do like the same thing you see he will attack to the unconsecrated therefore the entire family is advised to take consecration mother father brother sisters you see they have the faith that is sufficient dividend is not required at each and every intricate details of the basic class is to be understood you see the concept the divine plan the concept of the god's plan that is sufficient the faith is important bible never says that uh, you have uh, so much of uh, wisdom and all those things uh, wisdom and knowledge is important but uh, faith is the main thing you see which is the victory that overcomes the world first john 5 7 you see faith uh, faith is the one that overcomes the world if we need to overcome the world we need to have faith what did the apostle paul say i have fought a good fight of faith hold on to the truth you see the faith on the truth god's plan for entire mankind that concept you have that the hell is not a place of torment soul dies trinity is not there truth about antichrist the second coming you see about the divine plan about the thousand years that is sufficient dear brethren many brothers are committed this mistake but not bringing the family you know as a wonderful brother who was listening to the classes you see you were so dedicated that after listening to the classes you see we form the ecclesia in their place itself but one mistake he did was that as he was listening to the truth he never witnessed the truth to his wife so worship was going on in his house but that sister would just just walk out to the uh, next door church and finish and come it went on for many years but ultimately you know what happened there was discomfort between husband and wife she began to weep and uh, brother began to compromise her. you see this is what satan will do 
as soon as a wife starts weeping, husband will melt down and try to surrender to her instead of surrender to God. We should uh, stand for the truth, you brother. Husband is the is head of the family. You should stand for the truth. And not only he himself, the entire family. What did Joshua say? As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. That's what Satan will do. You see? Uh, you know what did uh, uh, Pharaoh say? You see? Huh? Pharaoh said, leave your wife and uh, children here and go. Uh, why? Because what will happen in Simsa? Huh? You see, if he go, he will, will come. Read verse 10, brother. Exodus 10, 10, brother. Uh, Joy, brother. Exodus 10, 10. And he said, he, and he said unto them, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look to eat for evil is before you. Ah, see? Evil is before you. Ah, I will let you children, wife and go, but uh, be very careful. What is there? Evil will happen. Danger will happen to them. You see? So don't take your children and wife. Satan will disturb the mind. You will go there. Who will take care of your wife? Who will take care of your children? Oh, who will conduct their marriage? You see, dear brethren, God would definitely conduct them. For Adam, who conducted the first marriage? God himself conducted her. So many God's children are there in so many, you see, gospel age, so many people. God's children will get married to the consecrated. You see, See, I am married. I am married uh, to whom? I am married to the God's children only. Consecrated. Uh, hence, uh, you see, there is no disturbance uh, for the spiritual life. But Satan will try to disturb your spiritual life. You see, and seek worldly women, worldly girls, uh, worldly boys. And uh, try to have, uh, you see, relationship with them. And they will deviate them from the truth. As they did for Solomon, the wisest of all the men. You see, he married uh, the women who worshipped other gods. Uh, so, what happened ultimately? He went out from the path of God at all. Never then, this is what uh, Satan would do. You see, so what did Jesus say? He that doesn't love me more than my father, brother, sister, husband, and wife has his own life, he can't be my, you see, disciple. Some people tell, no, brother, how can I leave my church to you? It's my mother church. I can't leave her. Oh, that is where I learned uh, accepted Jesus. That is very important. That is not important. Accepting is Jesus is important. Not that accepted Jesus. Where that is not important. Where you accept Jesus, that is not at all important. You see, but you are accepting Jesus and following his path. That is important. You see, read Isaiah 4.1. Uh, Romister, please read Isaiah 4.1. Four twenty-one, Isaiah four, chapter first verse. And in the day, seven women shall take hold, of, take hold of one man, saying, "I will. We will uh, eat our own bread." And wear our own um, apparel. Uh, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Repro reproach. You see, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Who is the seven women? Seven means complete. Woman means false church. You see? Today, all the false church are taken by a word of one man, Jesus. They're saying, give us only your name. Because without your name, no Christians will come to the church. But we will have our own food. We will prepare our own food. All the false doctrine prepared and taught in theology college. We have learned uh, ill, soul, doctrines, uh, false doctrines. So no redemption, no salvation. You see, uh, and uh, Lord Supper, baptism, all the false doctrines they learned. Trinity. Uh, we have our own food. We have our own clothing. You see, we just need what? Uh, your name. You see, that is the condition of the world. That is the condition of the false churches today. 
you'll see dear brother and huh? some people think oh, brother if we come here we'll we'll get married will we get a good companion will we get a grave who will do our funeral dear brother and who will take off our marriage and all these things if something happens will we come yes we will come we got all the things registered legally to establish a church you see all the permissions legally it has been obtained uh, dear brethren so all the steps uh, god's children will definitely take it and god will help us see jesus did not taught about uh, his burial before his death but it what happened after his death uh, god gave him rich burial a rich man's tomb was offered so similarly you see god will definitely help his children he would never leave us he has promised us you will never leave us nor forsake us similarly dear brethren you see god would never leave us and what was the reply of moses for this one joel brother read exodus 10 verse 9 and moses said we will go with our young and with our old with our sons and with our daughters with our flocks and with our herds will go will we go for we must hold a feast unto the lord ah what did moses say and we can't listen to you we will take entire family ha huh? young old male female children you see everybody we will take everybody because we need to have a feast not only just go and worship in a temple and lightly come like that no we need to have a feast this is how god children should make decision with them if we go we will go entire family to worship the lord now this uh, compromise did not work out now what happened again uh, you see fair call for moses come we will discuss this time what was the offer that was given read exodus 10 chapter verse 24 uh, exodus 10 24 uh, amar brother can you read exodus 10 24 x because 24 24 and and pharaoh call unto moses and said go go in serve the lord only let you flocks and your herds be stayed let let your little one little ones also go with you ah you see now what they were telling you want your family to go go take and definitely but leave your herds leave your flock here only and go what does it mean you see that is the property israel people did not have any property did not have any building anything nothing nothing was there in egypt their only property was their flock now they were telling leave your property here only and go but what did jesus say where is your heart where will the people's heart be tell me what did jesus say tell me jesus said no where your property is there yes hmm. your heart your yes. heart there your heart is there that means uh, hmm, fairer is saying leave your heart and go you know they went so far and tried to came back after taking everything if they left the flock and all what would have happened uh? even after entering they would have returned back you know that is the reason there is a proverb israel left egypt you see israel people left egypt but egypt never left israel all the egyptian start were always in their mind dear brethren you see if we leave egypt we should completely quit egypt you know we thought taking any animal what will they go and offer sacrifice to the lord huh? what did moses say read verse 25 amar brother read brother verse 25 huh? <clears throat> and moses said thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt 
offering that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Okay. We need to take everything because we need to offer sacrifice to the Lord. Dear brethren, just listening to the truth and coming and going is not sufficient. No, no, no. That is not at all. It's of no use. We need to offer sacrifice to the Lord. What do we offer sacrifice to the Lord? We should offer our body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. That is consecration. Consecration is very important. You know, in the law, God told, if anybody has to come to the God temple, he should never come empty-handed. He should bring something at least in his hand. Similarly, if you are trying to be God's children, if you want to be the true church, we just can't simply come, listen and go. We need to dedicate ourselves. We need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Read uh, Romans 12.1. Joel brother, Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Which is a reasonable service. That is the service of God. Not uh, Saturday, Sundays, Saturday service, Sunday service. They say, no. Oh, did you go to service? This is a service. Offering our bodies as a living service. Reasonable service, dear brother. And this also, if we don't do what? Huh? Anyway, we're going to die. You see, if you are there in the world, do you think we can live happily? No, we're going to die. Let us offer ourselves to the Lord. Definitely, Lord would never harm us. He will do good in our life. We should be able to dedicate ourselves to the Lord. You see, sacrifice to the Lord, dear brother. Therefore, you see, huh? We should never come empty and dead. Moses said, if we go, just like that, what are we going to have offer to the Lord? We need to offer ourselves, dear brethren. You see, therefore, you know, what did Moses reply? Read verse 26, brother. Amar brother, read Exodus 10, 26. Twenty six. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not and hope be left behind. Ah, dear. You see, our cattle also will go behind with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. Continue. Huh? For there, thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God, and we uh, know not with uh, not with what we must serve the Lord until we come. Either. Okay. So, here, what did Moses say? We won't even leave a hoof behind. What is a hoof? What do you mean by hoof? Does anybody know? Huh? Hoof means what? Hmm? You know, we all wear sandals, correct now? We all wear footwear, correct now? You know, hoof is a footwear of animal. You see? Huh? Moses said, I don't even leave my chapel and go. I won't even leave my footwear in Egypt and go. Forget about my footwear. Even the animal's footwear also, we won't leave in Egypt. That was the strict decision, a strong decision Moses made. Similarly, we should be like that. Too. We would never leave anything behind in offering our sacrifice to the Lord, we will come a dedicated heart, a whole heart to the Lord. Dear brethren, just imagine, do you think the Lord would please with that sacrifice? 
Yes, the Lord would definitely be pleased with the sacrifice, dear brother. And imagine tomorrow if we finish our race and if we go to heaven, if the Lord comes and gives us the crown, if he gives us only half crown, will we accept it? If he gives us half crown and tells, no, no, I'm sharing half crown to other, half crown to you. So 500 years you rule with Jesus and next 500 years you will rule with Jesus. Will we accept? Will we accept that compromise? No. We will never accept that compromise. Similarly, we will tell, Lord, I have run so faithfully to you. Please give us the full crown. We will fight for our crown. We will stand for our crown. That is what we need to do now. We should never compromise for anything. You see, the Lord would definitely strengthen us. But Satan would always try to deviate us. You see, not many people who are listening to the truth may consecrate. You see, Satan would try to deviate them from the truth. You see, by putting all sorts of unnecessary thoughts and deviations as uh, is done to the devil. He will always do it. Oh, shall I consecrate or not? Oh, so much of fear will come. What the people will think. You see, we should think what God will think. You see, God never left uh, God's children who stood for the truth. Uh, he always protected them. Similarly, God will definitely protect us. Rahab was the only woman who stood uh, for the Lord. You see, but yet, uh, God never left uh, Rahab. Through Rahab, uh, Jesus came, you know. And uh, Tamar, Tamar also was a lonely woman. But through Tamar came Jesus. Uh, Ruth, uh, she was a strange woman. You see, everybody left her. You see, but uh, she held on to Naomi. God never left Ruth. You see, he got betrothed to the richest man in Israel, Boaz. You see, and through them, Jesus came. Similarly, if you stand for the truth, God would never leave us. It is uh, just a small test of our faith. God is testing and seeing at this moment how these God children are reacting and what type of decisions are they taking. Standing for the truth as a family and dedicate their life as a family or else they're hesitating. Uh, dear brethren, we need to stand for the truth and uh, you see and do the Lord's will. And definitely, Lord will help us to take decisions as Moses took. So may the Lord bless uh, these words. Anybody has got any doubts, any questions, they can ask. Anybody, any questions? Any doubts? Joel Brother, any doubts, any questions? No, brother. Romy, sister, any questions, any doubts? No, brother. Amar, brother, any doubts, brother? No, brother. Good. Una, sister. Okay, good. 